What's going on everybody? Are you hearing an annoying echo when you record in Traction Waveform? If you are, let's fix that right now. The first thing I wanna talk about is double monitoring. So double monitoring basically means that whenever you have an audio track set up, like I have track one right here, I have my input set to input one. And first of all, I know I'm not getting a signal, so I know something's not right. So let's first set that up. And you always make sure that your audio devices are set up the correct way. Right now it's set on device ASIO for all, and I am not using that. I'm using the Zoom L8. I don't even know if I got, how I got set on that in the first place. But I have it set on ASIO now, so it should be fine. And I have it enabled. I'll put one and two, all right? So make sure all that stuff is perfect first. And then when you go back, see, I'm getting a signal on master L. Input one is where I want to be. And once I have it set to record, I should be able to record something. Now, right now you don't hear any echo whatsoever. So if I record, yeah, okay. I'm recording something. I know that's true. So when I play it back, okay. I'm recording something. I know that's true. So now that I've recorded it and I've pressed play and everything sounds fine, but you notice there is no echo. Well, this is what happens sometimes when you have a setup to record, you might have on what's called direct monitoring. Direct monitoring is something that you can find on your interface so for instance when i have headphones plugged in i'm hearing the direct monitoring from my mixer which is the zoom l8 but if i was hearing back the sound from the computer at the same time then you may hear an echo all right the most common reason for an echo is double monitoring so when you're hearing the sound from both your input and traction waveform you want to make sure that your input monitoring is checked off. Now, it's good to give you a sense of what your effects will sound like, like if you use an auto tune or if you're using reverb delay and you kind of want to hear it real wet, uh, then that might be a reason why you have it on. But latency is always a key factor and we'll get into talking more about latency in a moment. So when you click on the track, I click on track one and sometimes you may not see it populate. So how did I get here? Well, let's talk about it. I want to click on where it says input one. And when I click on it, I will see at the bottom the control bar, which is right here, but it doesn't really show you much, right? You just see one little line, but there's some other options that are available if you expand the control bar. So what you want to do is press the arrow that's at the very bottom corner. Click on that. And now you're going to see input monitoring mode off. But when I turn it on, yeah, then I'm going to hear a delay. Now, if your latency is pretty good, it won't be much of a delay. But let me show you what happens if the latency is bad. You can also access the track input monitoring from the actions tab, which is on the left side at the very top. It's kind of like a browser section. That's what I like to think of it. But if you click on each of them, you tracks markers, search files, and then actions, and then you'll see input monitoring mode. And you can turn it on or off or on auto for that. So let's see what happens if we adjust the settings and adjust the latency. So I have to open up my control panel. If you're using ASIO, then you would open up your control panel. But if you're using Windows Audio, Windows Audio exclusive, Windows Audio low latency mode, or direct sound, uh, or core audio if you have a Mac or something like that, then your settings may be a little different. So, but for this, I have to use a control panel because normally for your audio buffer size, you should be able to adjust it here. But if you have ASIO, you just gotta go to control panel. Right now I have it on 512 samples, but let's move it all the way up and see what happens. So now I have it 2,976 samples let's try it okay so make sure that you have it set i got a re i received a little error at first when i tried it because i probably put it too high of a sample but um let's see if it works now okay click on the track and put one 
Yeah. 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 Oh, you, you know, know, what know what I'm talking about. about. All right, so, so now you can, can really hear the echo, echo and this, this is a bad echo. echo. I mean, I mean, it'd be cool if you want that effect, effect but, but let's, let's save that for later, later on when we add an effect to the track. track. We, we don't, don't want effects while we're recording, recording because, because then, then what happens, happens is, and I'm going to go back up to actions, track, input. So you might have to click on input too as well, and then off. Okay. So when I say click on actions, edit, track, input. So there's different options here. It's a bunch of stuff on this DAW, and it's a free DAW. So this is what I love about it so far. So input monitoring is off. You notice how late my audio is now compared to the first time. So when you're thinking about recording, make sure that you have your latency as close to uh, fast as possible. And what I mean by fast is control panel again this is safe so to the right the higher the sample rate the more safer it's going to be the lower the samples <clears throat> okay and, and actually I'm sorry let me rephrase that not sample rate but I mean the lower the amount of samples I'll put it like that uh, the lower the samples the closer and this allows you to go all the way down to 24 samples now I would not advise to record a whole you know, three, 200, 100 some tracks with that. Maybe if you're doing like four track, eight track or something like that, that'd probably be fine. 512 samples is good enough. I might go down to 256 or something like that if I really need to. Latency is the delay between when you play and then what the computer hears you play and then what you hear the computer play back. It's a little hard to explain, but basically just think of it like this, this microphone is an analog instrument so i'm speaking into it it's going in analog but it has to convert to digital when it gets to the computer and then it leaves the digital rim and goes back to the analog back to my headphones so i can hear what i recorded or what i'm singing or saying so that does take a while for it to happen which is called latency so you may want to adjust that latency to get as low as possible I like to get it low when I'm recording and I'm not a person that adds a whole lot of effects on from the get go because I want to be able to get creative and add effects when I start mixing and doing things. Now, some people like to add effects from the get go, you know, and that's OK. If you put a few effects on, should be no problem. But you don't want to start putting, you know, 25 plugins on every specific channel or track. Because then you're going to slow your computer down. You might have dropped audio, etc. But if you're going to start using all those effects and plugins, boost that thing as high as it can go. So, yeah, so just keep that in mind when you're in the settings. If your buffer size is low, but you're still seeing a lot of dropouts, it might be that your computer can't really handle it like that. And you might even want to just try restarting your computer. And once again, if you have an ICO option available, please use it. Uh, I advise you to get an interface, some type of interface. Interfaces are so cheap now. You can get an interface for under $100. So I would advise you, and if you're not sure which interfaces to get, I have links to some that are in the description. So definitely check those out. Last question, are plugins that you have on the track actually causing the issue? Uh, if you have input monitoring on, and maybe you had it on just to, while you're recording, but you happen to add effects, or maybe you had effects that were added to the track already when you created it, um, and those are actually enabled, you will hear those effects while you're recording. Now, it shouldn't affect the track afterwards, but it will affect it while you're recording. And the reason why I say that is because it may push things later or it may make you hear things later and, and it may make you sing out of time. For instance, I have a delay that's on here and I just have it set up, you know, it's in sync, got some feedback on one side, not really worried about the settings, but we hear nothing right now. But when I click on it and then I turn that input monitoring on, yeah, yeah. yeah. then yeah. I hear it, you can hear a whole lot of delay. And, and if I'm recording, recording like this, I know you 
Yeah. So, so, so when I hear it back, doesn't sound as bad there. But when I was talking, you could really hear how much of a delay it was. And that was the delay added on top of the already latency that I had because of my latency settings. So hopefully this does help. If you found this tutorial helpful, definitely smash the subscribe button, click the notification bell. And if you need more tutorials, please let me know in the comments what you want me to cover next in Traction Waveform. And if you're wondering how to add another type of effect like reverb, then I have a video that should pop up right after this that'll show you exactly how to do that quickly within Traction Waveform. All right, take care.